What's up, gear mortals? Trey Xavier here, back with another Superior Drummer 3 tutorial, and today I'm gonna show you how to mix your drums inside of Superior Drummer without ever leaving the plugin using just the built-in stuff that's in there, routing, the mixer, the built-in effects, the whole nine yards. Check it out. Mixing your drums inside of Superior Drummer 3 is what I like to call a DAW within a DAW. Might seem kind of counterintuitive at first, and you're probably thinking, well, why wouldn't I just export it into my DAW and then mix the tracks from there? Well, it's got some advantages um, that I'm gonna outline for you right now. Now, I want you to keep in mind that I am not a mix engineer. I don't mix my own stuff. I'm not really that good at it, so I kind of just focus my energy on other stuff like songwriting, getting better at the guitar, etc. cetera. Um, so I'm not gonna show you how to do a mix. Um, I'm just gonna show you how to set it up so that you can do what it is that you want to do to the drums that you have. For instance, I'm not going to show you how to set a compressor on your kick drum. You already know how to do that if you're a mix engineer, and you probably do it a lot better than I do. I'm just going to show you how to get the compressor onto the kick drum track or onto the kick drum bus once you've made one. So I'm kind of your guide through the wilderness, not necessarily the person who's going to tell you what to do with the trees once you chop it down. That's a terrible metaphor, but you get the idea. So here we have the Bone Stock Superior Drummer 3 default kit. So we're gonna head over to the Mixer tab. Okay, it shows us how many mics we've got on here, how many user mics, so that's like if we added some, other, some of our own drum samples, which I showed you how to do in a different tutorial. Um, how many buses and how many outputs. So right now, uh, there's no effects on anything Everything's just going uh, straight out to the output. Uh, there are some levels set. These were the default levels that were set. You can, of course, change those, but it shows you all the different mics that you're working with. Dead simple, we're gonna jazz it up a little bit. So right now, my thought process is, well, I've got three kick drum mics. I wanna process all of those together. How do I do that? There's no buses here. This is everything right now um, that, that we've got. When I first started doing this, I was like, oh, how do I make a bus? Like, how do I get buses over here? If you pull up a kit preset from any of these, um, it's gonna have all kinds of buses, all kinds of routing and outputs and effects on it. So when I first started doing this, I was like, how do I get buses? How do I make a bus? So it's a little counterintuitive, but check this out. You head over to the output of any one of these tracks, and look, there's 16 buses, but they don't exist yet. Once you route something to that bus, then it pops up right over here. Then we can name the bus Kick Bus. And then we can send all of the kicks to the Kick Bus. Super easy. So then you can do the same thing for your snare, your toms, etc. So this will allow you to process like instruments all at once without using a ton of plugins and a ton of processing power and all that. If you want to have something go directly out but not out the main out, you can of course do the same exact thing for an output. Um, you can just have it go straight out. You can name this output whatever you like. Um, that way you can just process individual instruments directly if you want, and then just send them straight out, um, either the main out or another out that you just make. So building on that earlier example, let's say you think the kick drum needs a compressor. That's pretty likely. All you have to do to add an effect is go here to the effects um, spot and go ahead and go to the dynamics. Let's grab a comp 76, which I'm sure is nothing like an 1176. and then you can uh, process it however you like. Get some presets. Firm kick. How about a kick squeeze? How you set the compressor is your business. I'm just gonna show you where it is. One of the advantages to mixing within Superior Drummer 3, instead of exporting the tracks into your DAW and then mixing them there, is that all the way up until the absolute final mix down, you can have the tracks in here as MIDI performances and not have to worry about physical tracks. Now, that means that you don't have to have more tracks going on within your DAW, which slows down your performance and all that. 
It's all just within Superior Drummer being triggered as MIDI. And then if you want, when you're done, you can export them all as processed files. And then, um, and then you can bring them into your DAW. Or you could uh, kick down the raw tracks. But if there's something that you want to change about the performance halfway through, and then you have to re-export everything, you might as well leave that at least until the very end, if nothing else. So it gives you this added level of flexibility where if you need to change something within the drum performance in the MIDI, you can go in and do that. You don't have to delete the files and then re-export them and re-import them into your DAW. Another thing that you can do in Superior Drummer that you can't do with a real drum set is change the bleed level um, of the drum into other drums or vice versa. For instance, here is the bleed enable function and what that does is it allows you to set how much of all the other instruments is bleeding into the kick drum. So when you select um, the, the kick drum track, for instance, you can enable bleed from all instruments. And then over here in the bleed from instruments section, you can, for instance, take the snare bleed down or up, depending if you want to make it more realistic sounding um, or a little more live, you can give it some more or you can give it a little bit less. And that really enhances the realism of your drum tracks and at the very least allows you to control it if you want it to be a little more clean or a little more dirty, kind of. And you can do this for every track in your entire drum kit. So you can figure out how much bleed from the hi-hat you want in the fourth floor tom or whatever, you know? So that's pretty sick. Then when you use this bleed level knob, what that is is it brings the overall level of all the instruments that are bleeding into your kick drum up or down. The, the levels relative to each other stay the same and then just overall everything goes up or down. The bleed function is kind of a whole little mix world of its own and really you could spend a lot of time making sure that your drums sound a certain way in terms of just the bleed. This is something that tracking engineers need to worry about more than anything when we're talking about real drums, but of course these are sampled so we have this kind of godlike power over the bleed of the drums, and you can use it to great effect. Over here in the Bleed from Instruments menu, you can turn off the bleed from individual instruments to whichever instrument you're worried about, um, and you can even invert the phase. And even crazier than that, if you want to turn down the kick drum in the kick drum mic so that you can hear more of the bleed, then you use the close mic audio from instruments level. Um, I can't really think of a reason why you'd want to do that, but just the, the fact that it's there is pretty impressive. Then we've got this time offset here, and you can set the offset of the actual hit of the drum that you're worried about. Um, you can move it forward or backwards. You can um, basically use it to, to shift uh, the phase of the instrument in relation to other ones, stuff like that. That can be pretty handy. And then lastly, over here, we've got the level envelope releases. And what that does basically is it makes the decay of the hit of whatever drum you're working on longer or shorter. I'll give you an example using the snare. So if you've got something that's ringing out too much or not ringing out enough, this is where you go. Then there is, of course, a bus send. Um, you can send as much of the sound, direct sound, or the bleed sound from the instrument to the uh, any of the buses, not just the one to which it is directly assigned. Um, and that'll allow you to send like a little bit of snare, for instance, to a reverb bus or something like that. And then you can affect just the bleed from that track differently with the with a different bus send. That's nuts. And of course, you can apply effects to the track directly, to any of the buses, or to any of the outputs, or all of the above. All right, so hopefully this has given you enough information to create and route all your own drum mixes within Superior Drummer 3. Thank you so much for watching my Superior Drummer 3 tutorials. This is going to be the last one for me, at least for a while. If you haven't seen my other ones, they're all in this playlist right here. And as always, be sure to subscribe for more reviews and original content. And I'll see you real soon.